Welcome to our video demonstrating the electrical wiring of Premier SIP walls. The anatomy of a SIP. Premier SIPs come with vertical and horizontal electrical chases factory cut into the foam core. The typical locations for vertical chases is every four foot on center. Horizontal chases are located at typical switch and receptacle heights. Electrical chases may also be located to specific customer requirements when this information is provided to the SIP manufacturer prior to producing SIP layout drawings. Installing SIPs for Wiring Begin by installing the bottom plate of the SIP walls on the platform subfloor. Make sure you place the bottom plate so the outer face of the SIP is fully supported by the platform. Review the SIP layout drawing to confirm the locations of the vertical electrical chases factory cut into the cores of the SIPs. Take note of the factory cut electrical chase location markings on the face of the SIPs. On both the subfloor surface and the face of the installed bottom plate, mark the corresponding locations where the SIP vertical chases will occur. Using a drill having a boring spade or similar bit that is slightly larger than the diameter of the factory cut chase hole of the SIP, drill a vertical hole completely through the bottom plate and the subfloor sheathing. As you set the SIPs, use the location markings on the SIP face and subfloor to confirm that the bottom plate access holes and SIP vertical electrical chases are aligned. If not aligned, remark and redrill the bottom plate access holes. Install block splines with factory cut holes in line with the horizontal electrical chases in the SIPs. When installing solid or engineered lumber splines, pre-drill holes in the solid splines and install in alignment with the horizontal factory cut electrical chases in the SIPs. At the SIP chase locations, drill a vertical hole completely through the top plate using a drill having a boring spade or similar bit. Marking and cutting for switch, receptacle, and fixture boxes. At factory marked receptacle and switch heights, use the receptacle box as a template to mark the face of the SIP. Using a circle saw, make a cut at the intersection of vertical and horizontal chases where wiring needs to change direction. Using a rotary cutter, Cut around the total marked area of the receptacle and switch openings. Preset metal templates having various electrical box sizes can be used to eliminate hand marking and speed up the cutting process. Using a hand tool, remove the cutout piece to expose the factory cut electrical chase run. Make sure that the drilled access holes are clean and completely clear of debris. Remove any debris from the electrical chase holes in the SIPs. This will make running electrical wire easier. It's recommended that you retain cutout pieces of the receptacle and switch boxes in case you need to make location changes later. The cutout pieces can be used to plug any unused switch, receptacle, or fixture box openings. With the receptacle and switch openings now cut, wiring in the factory chases can begin. Wiring of electrical runs. Our animation illustrates the many paths by which electrical wire can now be run in the SIP walls. After wiring is completed, all switch, receptacle, and fixture boxes are installed. Wiring turning corners. If wiring needs to turn a corner in the SIP wall, two options are available. As seen in this illustration, wiring can be directed downward into the floor platform from a vertical factory cut chase, and then fed upward into the opposing SIP wall through its vertical factory cut chase. Our next illustration shows a 4-inch circular saw cut made in the exterior corner of the SIP at the height of a horizontal factory cut chase, allowing access to the wire. The wire is then fed into the factory cut chase of the opposing SIP wall. 
The four-inch circular plug is then put back into its own hole and adhered into place with expanding construction foam. Air sealing for wiring. After wiring is completed, use a low expanding foam to fully seal the electrical chase behind all boxes and any unused cutouts. Remember to foam seal all interior and exterior wall electrical boxes. All wire access holes, used or unused, must also be foam filled. Electrical wiring of SIP walls can be done in numerous ways. Here are some examples of the most used platform methods. SIP stood on a structural floor platform. SIP's bearing on a stem wall or a full height basement wall with the floor platform bearing on the mud sill. SIP first and second floor walls with an open platform between stories. A second story SIP wall bearing on a first floor SIP wall that's carrying floor joists and a subfloor seated into top wall joist hangers. When using this platform configuration, make sure that the second story bottom plate chase access holes and the first story wire access holes are in alignment. All these open floor and floor ceiling platforms provide excellent access for wiring of SIP walls. Electrical wiring of SIP walls constructed over slab on grade foundations. Wiring of SIP walls constructed over slab on grade foundations is accomplished from the top of the SIP wall. Electrical wiring can now be run from the top of the SIP wall or through intersecting interior partition walls into switch, receptacle, and fixture boxes cut into the SIP walls as shown earlier in this video. For more information and details, please refer to the Premier SIPs resource manual and visit our website at premiersips.com. Thank you for watching our video.